Elon Musk tweeted out this morning and said that the deal with Twitter is on hold. He said, Twitter deal temporarily on hold pending detail supporting calculation that spam slash fake accounts do indeed represent less than 5% of users. And he linked out to a Reuters article that's about 10 to 12 days old at this point and estimated that about 5% of the accounts, total users on Twitter are spam or bots. Elon is basically saying, I need to check this out, but I am still committed to the acquisition, right? Because immediately people jumped on his back and they said, you were never going to do this anyways. This was all a publicity stunt. You don't actually intend to buy Twitter. I think there's a few different ways to look at this. And John, I'm curious of your opinion, because ultimately, in my opinion, I almost think this might be a negotiating tactic, right? He came out and he purchased Twitter or agreed to acquire them uh, for $54 a share, which was $44 billion valuation of the company. The stock has decreased uh, or would be decreasing tremendously if that if that uh, agreement wasn't in place, given what we've seen in the market, right? So stocks are down big, crypto's down big. Basically, all assets uh, are down pretty big over the last few weeks. So I think that he might be realizing, hey, I overpaid for this. I was super aggressive. I really wanted the asset. It's probably not worth nearly anything like that. And now there's been some turmoil, right? So they've started to fire executives. They've paused on hiring. A lot of people have started to quit because of this. And if they don't want to work for Elon or want to go find jobs elsewhere, that's all cool with him, right? He's saying like, when I come in, we're going to change some stuff. Like if you do not want to be part of that, leave now, right? Go start searching for other organizations, which I think is fair to both parties. He's made his intentions clear. But ultimately now he's saying, uh, in my opinion, at least, that this acquisition might be too high. He wants to determine a few other things. Say spam and bot accounts are 10% of the platform or 20% of the platform. I've seen personally external uh, uh, reports that claim that it's maybe 10 or 15%, so nearly triple what Twitter is saying that it is. Ultimately, he has to do some due diligence. He didn't do it prior to the acquisition, it seems. Now he wants to talk to Twitter more about it. Interesting tactic to tweet about it rather than just go to the board directly, but that's how he rolls. That's how he does this. So I think a little bit more is to come here, but I, I love this one quote that Lex Friedman posted on Twitter that was basically talking about the importance of having someone or the potential importance of having someone like Elon Musk run Twitter. And Lex said, Elon Musk is the only active engineer or scientist in the list of top 50 Twitter accounts. Music, sports, comedy, movies are awesome, but so is engineering and science. I wish there would be more of the latter to inspire young minds who are curious about engineering and science. And I actually think that this speaks to a lot of things that we've talked about on the show, which is that Elon Musk buying Twitter is good because he's the person that you want to be a role model for an entire generation. And that has become a hot take for some reason. I don't know exactly why. Five years ago, it wasn't at all. But now people want to say that he was born rich. He had all these advantages in life. They're even claiming now major publications insinuating that he's a racist for some reason. Uh, but ultimately, a lot of these things have been disproven. Anytime you actually look into the facts of these situations, it's not true. And I think what we've seen is that Elon Musk is the person that we want to inspire an entire generation, right? TikTok is popped up, right? And you're being blasted all these videos of people doing dances and, and doing all these things that aren't necessarily going to drive innovation or create value for things in this country. And again, entertainment is a form of society that is important to have. But ultimately, I think Elon Musk is one of those individuals to Lex's point that is now being put on that pedestal and seen as that figurehead that he should have been for a while because of his engineering background, because of his science background, because of all of the, the things that he is trying to accomplish in this world and the companies that he is building. So I agree that I think it's a good thing. I think what, what is to be determined is ultimately what happens with Twitter. But hopefully this is a jump. This is just a bump in the road. Uh, but I do find it interesting that so many people are already taking victory laps. Mm -hmm. There's literally accounts on Twitter, big accounts I've seen that are saying, I, I always told you guys this was never going to happen. This was all publicity. Stunt. He never wanted to acquire Twitter. He's literally telling you guys that he is still committed to the acquisition. <laughs> he wants to check on something, right? And maybe that drives the price lower and they agree to something else. But the other important thing to know is there's a billion dollar breakup fee if this deal doesn't go through, right? So if Elon Musk calls it off, maybe he can claim that they misrepresented metrics and get some money off or, or eliminate that completely. But if it's determined that he had bad faith in one of these negotiations with never intending to actually agree to a deal, there's a billion dollar fee he has to pay. I don't care if you got 200 billion, 300 billion, 400 billion, 500 billion. Billion dollars is a lot of money. I don't think he wants to waste that money. I don't think the investors that have teamed up with him on this bid want him to waste that money. And I think... My assumption, right, just my opinion, is that this is hopefully a bump in the road because 
the amount of reputational damage and everything else that it would happen for him to back out of this deal now, I think he doesn't want to deal with. And I truly do believe that he is doing this for the good of Twitter, right? He wants to see it become that public square with free speech that it has already, it has always tried to be. So I think we'll see what uh, happens over the next few months, right? Before the deal closes, but I wouldn't claim victory yet. I certainly don't think that he is just going to back out of this deal uh, without putting up a fight. I think that he, his intention is to do the deal at what price that deal is done. I don't know. What is your thoughts, John? I wouldn't claim victory for either side yet. People that think that this deal will go through or the people that think that this deal will fall apart because of Elon or Twitter and their board, right? You have talked about, and you mentioned executives have left, their head of revenue left, right? So people are kind of realizing what's going to happen in the future months. Uh, their shares sunk, obviously, but people are running for liquidity. So most of the market is down anyways. So it's not really directly tied to this, but yeah, they went down 11%, right? People aren't as bullish as possible. I think the stock is sitting anywhere between like 40 and $45 when he's saying he's going to take it private at 54. Look, now people are saying, is it actually going to happen? I still believe he's trying to take it private. I don't think this was a money play. I think he honestly cares about free speech. Um, the bots being 5% or 15%, I don't think matters as much as people like really care about it. Like that is if Twitter has 300 million users and it's 5%, you know, it's 5 million users on the platform. It's 15%, it's 15. So it's, it's a large number, but I don't think it really matters. I think cleaning up the bots as a whole is a big deal. Um, but the bots have are more active than other accounts. And look, to Lex's point as well, Elon's getting the notoriety that he's probably deserved for a very, very long time. We as a society, especially in the United States, put up a bunch of celebrities on pedestals for sports and music and entertainment and movies and things like that. But to be frank, like they're adding value to society, but Elon's value add is exponential compared to what a lot of these people are doing. And he should be praised for that. Hey you, did you like this video? Great, we make five of them a day and post them here on this channel. Make sure you subscribe, like the video, and see you next time.